So I'm Mark Seymour. Um, anything you want to ask on the day, please just ask away. I'd really like the whole day to be as interactive as possible. Um, I'm a pretty much open book, so you know, ask about business, ask about shooting styles, ask about processing. Um, you know, come up and ask me individually or ask within a group, and I'll do my best to sort of answer you all. You know, whatever I can, and I'll be as open as honest, and you know. As long as it's about Nikon and not Canon, so that's the only thing I can ask. <laughs> but if you use Canon cameras, it's no big deal to me. It's not, you know, I'm a Nikon ambassador, but you know, it's it's about photography, and uh, you know, they're all great cameras, and it's about getting a great experience and getting some great shots. Like about three months ago, I I, um, I photographed this couple, and I'd never met them before the wedding day. He's a boxer, and I said, you know, I'd love to photograph you. Uh, boxing match and he said yeah come along and I said no no I says I want to spend three or four days with you before and I said I want to be with you on the day you're boxing and I want to be there by the ring and I want to be with you if you win or you lose and he says oh he says, what, what? and I said I want to just get 30 40 pictures that tell a story of you training and all the way through so again it's doing the project on a person and we all we all know really interesting people or we bump into people and, and most times if you say ask them say you know what I'd love to photograph you over a couple of weeks or a couple of days most people say yeah I don't mind that they're quite proud of the fact that you've asked them um, but you need to find interesting people um, and you'll be surprised that you know what you get um, people will allow you to do it I think most of us if someone says can we photograph you you'd be quite like I wonder why they pick me and if you give a valid reason we'd probably say yes yeah, okay but you need to stay with them a longer period no point just going there for an hour because in that first half hour hour you're not going to get the best pictures you want them to be totally relaxed and just forget about you so that you know that you, you can take them in their normal life and them getting on with whatever they're doing um, so we're going to go through today conquering your fear how to approach people in, and uh, hopefully you know, what we'll do is we if we split into little groups of two um, and you were talking about shooting wide yes and, 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 and coming to the subject of composition i noticed going through your interviews there's a central subject but you've also picked up other people around like almost like subplots yes for, for the main for the main subject you don't need tips on, on sort of how to pull that together. Because <laughs> what is it, the, the, the subplots, if you like, are all relevant to your main subject. They are, and that's what you need to look for, that decisive moment. So if you notice a lot of the pictures, there's two people's, you know, there, there was one, there was a, a Christian guy, an Arab guy, both sort of going like that. So if one had gone like that, it would be okay still, but you've got two doing it. So you've got to just be there and wait for it to happen. Um, you, with, when you're shooting a zoom, you will never get that because shooting a zoom, all you're doing is you're doing this. And on the technical front, my understanding I might be wrong. The party espresso, not in most of his career, with, with a, a, a lighter with a 50 millimeter lens. It was a 50 mil, yeah, yeah, yeah lens. But he, he, he wasn't. Did anything else. No, but you look at a lot of Carly Bresson's pictures, and, and he's got a beautiful background somewhere, and, and he's waited for a single person or. Um, you know, two people to do things, or he's gone up onto a bridge and waited for three people to walk past in different sort of directions. Um, you'll, you'll quickly find where we, particularly where we're going today, that you know you'll have a speaker where you are, and where I am, there'll be a crowd around you. So if you go in with a zoom, all you'll be doing is getting this, and your pictures won't be any different from every other person going down there thinking they're getting great pictures of people at Speaker's Corner. But the wide angle lets you tell a story. So if you put that person in there, maybe on the third or um, you know, some place in there, and you've got other people around them reacting to that speaker. So you've got something like that, and you've got crowds going like this. That's what tells the story and holds it all together. I don't know if it's answered your question. Well, it has, yes, because well, you're, not, you're not just looking at the principal subject and getting no. an expression. No. Uh, uh, David Bailey might be uh, frightening or something. Yeah. Like 
it's not you're looking you're looking for more than just that first. Yes, yeah. And you you've you've got to be conscious of what's in the background as well as yeah. what's in the foreground. And that's the case when whatever we photograph, you know, is you know, we can you know, if I photograph you here I know straight away it's like a baby chain you, you, know, you don't want that in there. I mean I know we can edit it out but you know I, I try and I don't like cropping or editing out stuff in my pictures if I can help it. Um, so a couple of things um, when you when I'm taking images as well and I encourage you to do it today is don't be afraid how many you take. Don't take one picture and walk away because you can bet your bottom dollar well, after you've taken that picture is the great moment. Dig, you know, Digital is not like film. You know, if you shoot film, every click is a pound. Digital is free. If you've shot today a thousand images, it doesn't matter because no one's going to see those other like, images. You're going to pick out those three or four great images and they're the ones that you're going to put in your portfolio you're going to show people that you've taken and people are going to go, oh, well, you're an amazing photographer, look at that great image. Whereas if you're going to take one image, you've got no selection to... So take loads. When, when you see things happening, when you see little moments happening, stay with it. You know, stay with it till it ends because if you take one picture and that moment continues, you've walked away from it. Now you're looking for another moment and you might not see anything else around. So just stay with that for four or five minutes. Sorry? They're, they're laughing at me because I tend to take... One picture. No. Oh, thousands. You know, do, does, does it matter? You know, sometimes at a wedding, you know, if I do a big Jewish wedding, we take, might take four or five thousand pictures and we edit it down to, you know, four or five hundred. So, you know, edit hard, take lots, don't have an issue with it. Uh, gear, you know, everyone says you need small, like be discreet and all that. It's a load of, I mean, yeah. I'm using that today. It's the biggest, most obtrusive camera you can see. But it's not about this. Because even if you put that up to your eye, the minute you put something up there, someone's seeing you, the only benefit of the small Fuji is, you know, probably at the end of the day, my shoulder's hurting, um, whereas and your shoulder won't be hurting. But it's how you move in. So if you see something over there, you don't run over there. You just amble over there, and you, know, you just you just be part of the crowd. And it's great, you know, we're all we're all dressed really good today. I can see that, and we're all. And we did one about six months ago. And this guy turned up like he was going to be shooting. Lions, you know, you had a safari hat on, and the safari trousers on, and he had the holsters either side, and you know, just everything he had, and it was just like you can't go out like that. Um, so normally go out with one camera, um, take one lens normally. You, you, if you take a 35 mil or whatever, you, you'll will get the shots because you'll force yourself. Um, personally, I'm, I'm, I don't own any zooms. A zooms is lazy, I think, because, you know, if I've got a 35 mil, you know, number one, I c it can be a, a 50 mil lens because I can change the crop sensor in my camera on, on a quick setting. Um, but, you know, I can walk to you or I can walk back and on a zoom you're doing this and composing. If you've got one lens, you know it inside out and you get to know exactly what it can do and what it can't do. My camera's set up um, so... And this is the focus, the back button focus. Um, Did you have to keep your finger on that when you take the picture? No. So you can just click it, take your finger on that. Yeah, as long as the, the focusing point is over the subject, it will continue to focus. So if someone's moving around and you, you go like this, it'll stay with it. Um, the downside is of it, if you put it in the middle, and you know, this, it'll focus over there in the middle, so you will, you'll get some out of focus pictures. Um, if you've got a D750, um, you've got a thing called group focusing, which has got five focusing points in the middle, and it automatically chooses the most, uh, the most appropriate. And believe me, it does work. It's really, really good. It's a really good. Only the D750 and the D4S has it on. It's quite a new feature. Um, so I use back button focus, I use manual everything, 
Um, if you if you want to use Aperture Priority or whatever you use, use it. I'd try and encourage you to go to manual. I mean, the light's pretty flat today. I would normally go up there and I think, right, it's, I'm going to shoot 400 or, or 600 or 800 ISO today. I would sh set my um, uh, speed or my aperture next. So I'd think, right, I'm going to shoot f3.2 or f2. I normally shoot in those sorts of apertures. And then I would just move my speed up and down. That's all I do. That's easy. I don't, my ISO is set, I don't have anything auto at all. I want to be in full control. And if you want to do some of those silhouette shots, you know, you'll need to be on manual because you'll need to expose to the sky and cut everything else out. And if you put it on auto, you'll just get a normal shot or it'll be blown out because you've got too much bright stuff in it. Um, processing, I do everything in black and white. Most of my weddings are done in black and white. It's what I love. You might love color. If you love colors, great, find, find a style and develop that style. I mean, most people know my images now and they say, oh, Mark loves black and white. And this is, is all images are all heavily vignetted and there's dark blacks in there. Some people might not like it, but it's my style. And it's the same as if you go to a, an exhibition, you know, and say David Hockney is there and you, you might love Hockney or you might really dislike him, but he has a style and you can see they're all his. And that's something that we find sort of a lot of people, there's, if you ask them, if I said to you, show me 10 great images of yours, there'd be, I mean, I don't know, because but most people, they'd be very, really varied, and there wouldn't be a, a style amongst all those sort of 10 images. Any other questions? Should we get walking? Mm -hmm. So we spotted someone really interesting to go and photograph at London Speaker's yeah. Corner. Uh, we've got a guy behind us who's very animated, very passionate about uh, what he's delivering in his speech, and we're going to go over and start photographing him. Jesus I can give you one million to put my, uh, my camera of choice uh, today is a, is a Nikon D4S. It's what I use all the time for all of my photography, and I'm going to put on a, a 24 millimeter lens. I'm going to get in real close and uh, capture some of the real raw emotion that's, uh, that's going on nice and close up. I'll tell you, sir, the crowd is never perfect. So we've just come back out of the crowd after photographing this really, really interesting guy. Um, we're in nice and close uh, with a 24 millimeter lens. Uh, creating different angles, so I was doing some from eye point and some from very, very low to create a nice silhouette. Using a 24mm lens, I was no more than um, about a metre, metre and a half away from the subject. And uh, we've just got some great images of some great expressions with great eye contact and great hand movement. Back, back, wait, wait, till look, wait till he looks you in the eyes. About a few he's not looking, so he's looking away to you. In a minute he'll turn and look at him. They they were now look, now look. The there he is, look. They are. Let me tell you, Mr. Clever. Why F's are still F's? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You see, there's the image where yeah. yeah. he was like that and he was like that. That's the one, yeah. That's it. Right, that's it. Five thousand. Have him right on the edge. Uh, look, there's a picture. See with the with that the thumb now. Over a number of years, in the same country, the figure will go up million Oh yeah, that's it. So let's see. He's got his hand there. Yeah, I know. He's, the he's got his hand. Wait till he puts his hand up there. You want two of them together. I'll, I'll go like that when you take the picture. Okay. We'll just wait. Those babies. In biology books, you look at them. They are not very they they unwanted. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get yeah. to the point. Look up in your biology book. You see? Were they unwanted? You've got him right on the edge of you? Were they unwanted? Yeah. Pregnant? There'll be one picture in there where they're like this yeah. together. Were they unwanted? That's what you want. Again, we have another example here of a, a great character, very passionate about what he's speaking about. And we get him real close and uh, not only take pictures of himself, but also great pictures of him interacting with the crowd. So we've got a nice little group of three here interacting with each other. And that kind of makes a perfect little story uh, that will look great in your portfolio.
So now you can work this. That finger coming out. So imagine if you just focus on that finger. I'm telling you, the day of judgment in front of the Saudi Arabia is going to turn on to The Queen of the Battle of Paris is going to so one of the interesting things about being a street photographer is uh, the amount of interesting people that you see. Don't be afraid to approach them. They can only say no. Um, and uh, as you've just seen, I've just approached this great character guy, uh, beautiful uh, bone structure. It looks like he's got lots of stories to tell from the lines on his face. And uh, had a, a lovely conversation with him and just pulled the camera up, started taking his photograph and he carried on talking to me as if I wasn't there and uh, it's a great way to engage with strangers but if they do say no just uh, accept that move on because you know what there's lots of other people out there who really love and enjoy having their photograph taken and appreciate you asking them to do it okay so we finished a very successful uh, workshop uh, at uh, London Speakers Corner uh, got some great pictures. Um, we've had uh, eight people on the course today and uh, everyone has gone away uh, very happy with some great images. Most people have overcome their fear of getting in close, uh, telling the story, capturing the character uh, characters of the place. All in all, a very successful day. So thank you to the Photographer Academy and to Nikon UK for uh, putting on the day.